Is the Christian faith a road, a pathway, a way of life? Or is it a parking lot, a warehouse, a system of belief and a system of sin management and a system of death preparation? I think there's a real struggle going on right now among an awful lot of people. Some inside the church who are, are dissatisfied with this kind of warehouse mentality that we get you in a room, we get you in a building, we get you, we keep you occupied singing songs and saying prayers and so on so that we'll protect you so you can be shipped off to heaven when you die. I, I mean, a lot of people, they really believe that and it works for them, but a lot of people say, that doesn't make sense. Other people are saying, no, we think Christian faith is supposed to be a way of life, a way of life that teaches us how to relate to God, how to relate, how to kind of survive inside our own skin, how to relate to our family and our friends. But not only that, how to think about the neighbor across the street or the neighbor on the other side of the tracks or the neighbor on the other side of the world in the middle of a war zone or in a refugee camp or some other place of great struggle and need. As we are trying to determine what the Christian faith is going to be, a lot of us are rediscovering it as a way, a way of life, a, a road that we walk, a pathway. It, it fits so perfectly with Jesus, who, who really walked along a, a beach one day and said to some fishermen who were there, hey guys, come follow me. I'll make you fishers of men. I'll take this life that you have uh, and lift it kind of to a new dimension. I'll get you involved in, in the, the big work, the great work of life. And uh, for me, that's what it means to be a Christian. It means to be on a road, to be on a path, to be learning a way of life. For a lot of people, when they think about the path and salvation, they think, oh, this is, uh, you know, uh, 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 it's defined as here's how to go to heaven when you die. But I think salvation has a much richer meaning than that. I think that's a meaning that emerges in Christian history, and there's a whole history and story to that definition of salvation. But the word salvation gets its original meaning in the biblical story from the liberation of slaves from Egypt. Salvation in the Bible means liberation. It means setting people free, obviously from physical slavery in that original story, but then setting people free from other kinds of slavery, slavery to all the internal tapes that we play and the scripts that, that kind of dominate us that we want to be free from, socially from all the games we play with each other, uh, and even politically and economically. You know, we're kind of enslaved right now to an economic system that is destroying the planet. And we need liberation. We need to find a better way to live in relation to the planet. We live in what some people call the military industrial complex that's geared around killing off our enemies. And some of us say, no, we need to be liberated from that. Salvation would be learning how to reconcile with our enemies and actually become friends. So when salvation changes its meaning for us, when we rediscover a deeper and really more biblical meaning for that word salvation, everything else will change. When Jesus would uh, meet people and challenge them to follow him, uh, he was inviting them into a new path of what I call aliveness. He called it life abundant, life to the full. You know, he used a word for it. In Greek, the word is zoan aeonian, which means life of the ages. Maybe if you could think of it this way, it's a big life. It's not life just stuck in this present age, life in this particular culture, life under this political or economic regime, but life of the ages is a great big life. Life to the full, aliveness. Unfortunately, that phrase, life of the ages, often gets translated in English as eternal life, which then means life after death. We're really, I think Jesus is talking about something that begins now. The key to that kind of a life is confidence that death is not the end, that, it, 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 that we don't really fall out of life and into nothingness, but we fall out of life and into God. And so that sense of confidence that we don't have to be afraid of death 
helps us live this life more to the full. Every day when you wake up, just keep this in mind, there are people spending billions and billions of dollars to make you unhappy. To make you unhappy until you buy their product, vote for their candidate, you know, believe their spiel, whatever it is. They're spending a lot of money making you dissatisfied, ungrateful, unhappy, discontent, so that you'll need what they're selling. If we want to find happiness, it's not going to happen by accident. We're going to have to have something so strong going on in our lives that it's stronger than all these attempts to make us discontented and unhappy and unsatisfied. Uh, that's why I think each of us, part of a way that each of us needs is, you might call it a discipline or a set of habits or a set of practices that, that in some ways counteract all these negative things coming in from the outside and all the negative stuff we kick up from the inside key to that, I think, is some basic practices in how we live our day, how we get up in the morning, how we begin our meals, how we calm down at the end of the day and go to sleep. We might call those personal practices. Uh, then I think there's a set of communal or social practices where we get together with other people who are also seeking that kind of deeper and higher aliveness. And we get together with them and we encourage each other in that, that better way of life. I think there's also a kind of curriculum that we want to focus on. There are a set of skills we want to learn. There are stories that our ancestors have told and retold for centuries. And those stories have deep meanings that help us live with more uh, aliveness and fullness. Uh, I, I think life is a lot like you know, everything else, it, it, it's, it's subject to entropy. The energy dissipates, it, it corrodes, it weakens, unless we're letting some new energy source arise within us. And for me, those spiritual practices are the practices that keep the well open, that keep the spring flowing so that we can be fully alive with that greater, bigger, deeper kind of life.